Today I'd like to talk about a tool that I've talked about before. It's called Activate. Uh, what I'd like to discuss today is an additional method to select a certain portion of a cloud that you want or, or an STL that you want to, to turn on. And I misspoke a moment ago when I said cloud. This feature does not work on point clouds. This will only work on mesh data. So the tool is called Flood. And the way it works is you specify, just like the other ones, the mesh or in, in this case only mesh, you can't use a cloud, that you want to use the flood tool on. Now that I have flood selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right mouse click. And when I right mouse click, you'll notice that I have with angle or edit angle. So with the flood function, I'm going to say with angle. I want to make sure that's turned on. And I'm going to say edit angle. And what angle do I want to work with? Basically, that angle is defining the angle between the triangles that from the first one that I select to the next one. If that angle is greater than that 35 degrees, then it will not select the triangle adjacent to it. So this is a tolerance angle. So if I shrink this, let's say to five degrees, for instance, and I pick here, what happens is, is it creates a flood based off of that five degrees. I pick here. I can hold my mouse down and run it along and you'll see it picks everything within five degrees of the current selected triangle. Now what you can do, and let me refresh this, come in here, I'm going to right mouse click, say edit angle, and I'm going to turn this up. We'll go up to 40 degrees. Now when I pick, you'll notice I get a much larger area because obviously 40 degrees is a much larger angle. So it allows it to encapsulate more of the uh, mesh with that single selection. Now, if I went too big, this is close to 90 degrees, then that if, if it were 90 degrees, it would want to select this because I said 40, it stops at that 40. So now when I pick over here, you'll notice that I'm getting these large chunks and it, start, it starts to really help you filter or I should say activate because there's a filter tool those portions of the cloud that you want. It's a very very smart way to select your cloud because now you can really fine-tune that angle and it makes it much easier like in this case if I were to try to activate up to this edge it may be very difficult to get right up to that edge but here I have a definite edge break and because I have that definite edge break, it allows me to say, okay, anything smaller than that definite edge break is going to be selected. And now it's activated to that portion. Now let me go back into activate, activate all. And once again, I'm going to use flood, but this time I'm going to turn my angle way up. We'll go to 70 degrees. I'm going to select this and you'll see here how it picked quite a bit of that STL. I'll do that one more time. Activate all. And for this, right mouse click, edit angle. This time I'll go instead of 70, I'll go down to 45 degrees pick and you can see how quick and easy understanding how that tool works okay so here's there's probably there's definitely a triangle somewhere in here an inverted triangle that's causing me a problem to cause this flood to go out and to see that greater boundary over there so I may just once again let me just do this activate all edit angle shrink this a little bit Again, I can hold my mouse down and just simply drag and it'll, as you can see, interactively just pick almost like a brush selection. So that's the flood technique for selecting a STL. Again, this will not work on point clouds.